there is no way on this earth that there is this many people seen and experienced stuff that it, it's false. My studio with me today is a man who filed this amazing report back in 2009 and it probably is my all-time favorite BFRO report of all time and so I am so honored to have him in the Sketching Encounter studio today. His name is Jimmy Cook. Jimmy, would you tell my audience a little bit about yourself? Well, hello everybody. <laughs> my name is Jimmy Cook. A um, little bit about background, I spent six years in the Navy, and then I, after my service, I uh, went to work for the Department of Defense, and I worked for the United States Air Force for 31 years. So all my, mil or all my background is mostly military, except for a few months here, and then about, about what, a year and a half in aeronautical school. and. Uh, well, that's about that I mean, that's in a nutshell for me. Well, thank you. Thank you for your service to our country, Jimmy. Oh, you're welcome. My yeah. pleasure. I'd do it again. Awesome. Um, so back in 1996, you had uh, an amazing encounter in broad daylight with, uh, mm -hmm. with something. Could you tell us what you uh, experienced that day? Okay. Well, the Reader's Digest version. Um, <laughs> Me and my buddy, um, we uh, took off. It was the week. Uh, it was the week of Thanksgiving, 1996, and we had missed the first week of deer season because we were both busy, tied up with our jobs. So we just, both of us, from from his job and my job, I took off that week. So Friday, the Friday before. Um, he hooked up with me at my house and he had a four wheel drive pickup and a little pop up camper. And I didn't have a four wheel drive pickup at that time. So he came over to my house. We packed up my uh, camping stuff and we took off. And from where we was living in central Oklahoma town here was it's a four hour drive and then another hour to get into a camping spot or over an hour actually so at any rate we went over there we found our camping spot got hooked up and uh, of course it was late that night by the time we got there and so we didn't do any hunting that day but then that was saturday morning we got up and for the next three days uh, saturday sunday and monday uh, me and him hunted together uh, pretty close together and then when uh tuesday it was a tuesday i'm pretty sure it was tuesday um i had been sitting for the next three days so i was pretty tired and I, I needed to go stretch out and he did too i think so we took out tuesday morning and he went one he went to the west and i went to the east and uh, so we hunted a separate that day and we got up that morning early, drank some coffee, and then uh, there was a. It's kind of hard to explain, but <laughs> it's a logging road. We was we was right, camping right on an old logging road, if you can call it that, even. And it was dark. It was still dark when we took off, and he went one direction after a bit, and I went the other direction, and I went up the this logging road. And there was a Y when you come up this logging road out of the camp and up a little hill, there's a Y. And I'd never been down that Y before. Been hunted up there several times, but it never went down this particular direction. And uh, it was still dark, but I had it when we left. But uh, the area there is really rough. I mean, it's rocky, lots of trees. So, uh, 
at this from the Y down where this little road comes out of there is like uh, I don't know maybe maybe a hundred yards or so. But I was not about to go walk any further with what light was there because you have to. I mean, there's lots of deadfall, these big rocks and all that. So I sat down on right at the Y there and drank a cup of coffee. I said, I want to wait until daylight because right at the end of this little, I don't know what it is, even, wasn't even, it's not even a logging road. It's just like a little, you could get a car down there, but you couldn't turn around and it was real small. So I sat down there and drank a cup of coffee. As soon as light came up, I started out. Now, I don't know, I don't know how this camera works. So I'm gonna try and do it this way. If you can see this, so imagine this. At the end of this little road there, uh, there's a big patch of trees and uh, a wooded area there. But once you come past that, you get this little Y, okay? And it's two ridges. They're yeah. parallel with each other. Well, sort of parallel. And I took this eastern edge. My index finger here would be the western ends, and this is the eastern end what I come to. And I don't know if you can see this or not. I mean, yes, I can see sense. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The ridge I took was this eastern side because I couldn't get to the western side from right there. And this thing, and I'll move this, I'll move this finger out. This, uh, okay, this, that's not a scene. Uh, I'm just trying to draw an illustration here. Uh, this ridge, comes down and, and it and it does kind of this number if you can see it so it's kind of sloping. And this ridge is it's sloping very yeah. sloping yeah. yeah and then at the very end of that it does this kind of this little thing here and if you can imagine um at any rate i was i walked down that thing and it was about 9 30 after i got into this particular area and uh man i was tired and oklahoma back then or that that year it was completely unusual it had been hot it had been dry hadn't rained forever i think its last rain was september and this was the tuesday before thanksgiving yeah. um so at any rate i i mostly down this little ridge now this ridge um, uh, had very little trees on it for, I don't know, there's a space of maybe 20, 30 yards. It was hardly any trees. Uh, but if you go further to the left, it's, it, then you have these big old, huge old growth oaks and uh, everything else before, uh, after that was where toward me was, uh, saplings nicely we just call i'll call them saplings so at any rate i had been walking for several hours down there and now on my legs are burning i am sweating it's hot hmm. and i said okay and i looked at my watch and it was about 9 30 and we had me and my partner had made an agreement to uh, meet back at the camp at uh, noon mm -hmm. So, you know, when you go with somebody and you make an agreement to meet somewhere or rendezvous at a certain time, then you need to do that because right. otherwise the other people get really, you know, nervous. Get worried, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was walking down this thing and I was about uh, probably 300 yards from the cutoff up there. And uh, I was kind of oblivious, to be honest with you. And this is... It's going to sound silly, but I uh, I had been walking, and I'm looking for deer and all that stuff, and hadn't seen nothing. I think I think I seen one squirrel and a couple of birds, and nothing else. It was it was just miserable. And so I got down about to your knuckle joint there, the middle knuckle, and I said, "Oh crap!" And then. Uh, kind of come to this opening and it was about uh i don't know like the 
20, 30 feet in a diameter kind of thing, like mm -hmm. a large bedroom. And uh, there was this stump there. And I said, oh my God, that looks marvelous. <laughs> so I sat down on that stump and I'm praying to God that my legs quit hurting. Oh, and so I sit on the stump and I'm looking at the, the finger next to me over there. And then I'm looking across my finger over here and the ravine has had, got a real deep ravine right in between the two of them. And I'm scanning all this area and I'm looking around and I'm trying to drink me some hot water from my canteen because by then it was so hot to my water in my canteen, I could have made coffee with. Okay. But uh, I was standing around looking and there wasn't nothing. And I turned back behind me and looked where I come from. And I looked and I said, oh my gosh, can I be more stupid? And I'll answer that question later. <laughs> Um, because I looked where I'd come from. I went downhill, see, on this finger, because it's kind of downhill slope, rocky, deadfall all the place. And I'm going, now, I've got to turn around and get back to camp, and I'm going to have to walk back up that thing. Right. Uh, and I thought, oh, my God, I'm so oblivious to everything, I guess. So I'm sitting here, and I automatically went into this come to Jesus meeting in my head with myself, you know, it's like, God, could you not have paid attention to what you was doing? <laughs> well, apparently not. <laughs> so I'm sitting here on this stump and from where I'm sitting on this stump in this little clearing, semi clearing, all I had next to me was saplings. Okay. Now you've got to understand at this point, I weighed between 260, 270 pounds and I was 41 years old. So I'm going, oh my God, this is, you know, I was built more like a roly poly than I was Chuck Norris. <laughs> so um, I'm sitting here, I'm going to catch my breath, get me a drink, and then I'm going to, thought I'd walk down. It's about 100 yards. I guesstimated 100 yards, which I turned out to be not exactly right, but at any rate, to the finger, and then look down across where it goes down, and there's a, there's a, uh, floodplain from Buffalo Creek over there. Well, I'm sitting here and collect myself, catch my next breath, and I'm just fixing to get up and, and go down. But I seen this thing running straight in front of me. And as a head, I recognized the head well, I didn't recognize the head. I just recognized it as a head. Mm -hmm. So I went through the catalog in your mind. You know how you get, you get catalog things in your mind? Absolutely. Okay, is this a deer? No, it's not a deer. Is it a uh, squirrel? No, it's not a squirrel. And you just go through that list. And that's what I was doing, cataloging, going through the catalog. Mm -hmm. I said, what the heck? And that was too far. And the sun was coming up from the east, obviously. And so, you know, there was the sun coming through these big old huge trees. There was no leaves on there because it's all hardwood. And this was November, so most of the leaves had fallen. So it put some funny lights and everything. So I thought, well, maybe I'm just not seeing this correctly or whatever. <laughs> and now I understand all this come through my mind within a matter of uh, seconds. Right, okay. right. You know, and I'm going, that head is weird. Number <laughs> one is big. And then my first thought was that looks like a cone head with fur or hair. And I, and I couldn't make, I was too far away to, and light was funny. So I couldn't really make out a whole lot of detail on the face, but I knew it had this. I think they call it a, what is it, a sagu some sagittal crest. Sagittal crest, like yes, yeah. Sagittal crest, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I could see that the eyebrows were extended. I mean, really big. Like the brow ridge, and, yeah. Right, the brow ridge, yeah. there you go. Yeah. 
And remember now, he's below me, and he's coming up the slope. Okay. Right. So I only seen the first thing I seen was about from here up. Right. And that's when I started processing all this stuff. And then it take another step or two, and it get a little higher, a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. Okay. So he took another step, and I could see his shoulders, and I thought. Those are big. I don't know what the, I mean. I've seen a lot of big, big men watch a lot of football, and some of those football players are huge. And I thought the NFL needs to draft this dude. <laughs> but then I got to thinking, uh, why is he out here? He doesn't have an orange vest on, and he took another step up, and. I looked to see if he had a rifle. He didn't have a rifle. Didn't have nothing in his hands. Didn't have nothing strapped over. These big old shoulders. And he took another step up. And I could see. I thought, well, God was kind of mean to this guy because he didn't have a neck. It was kind of attached directly to his shoulders. Right. And then I thought, why is he in a fur coat? It's about... 75 degrees or something out here with the sun shining already. Mm. Uh, it just didn't make no sense to me. And he made another step up and I could see, then I could start seeing his arms. And his arms as big as my thighs. Wow. And he took another step and his fingers almost reached down to his knees. I thought, oh my God, this is the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. And now I'm freaking out. I'm going, okay. I was, I was thinking maybe my partner spiked my coffee with some LSD or something, and I, you know, <laughs> and I was imagining something. And uh, then it stepped up, and here I'm sitting out. Like I said, I weighed about 260, 270 pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. I'm, a stop. I'm in a wide open, and I'm going, okay, that answers part of the question. And he steps up. And he come as soon as he come up of the crest, up to the crest, he spotted me. So he'd done a hill. There was an oak tree right at the very end of that, the tip where it comes up here. There's a big old huge oak tree right there. And I guess it finally spotted me. And it done a heel spin and automatically disappeared behind this tree. This big, huge oak tree it was right next to him. I'm going. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. So I'm sitting here for a few more minutes, and I, right now I'm in the FOS mode, so I'm not sure what to do. Yeah. And uh, then it steps, it takes a step out from behind the tree, and I'm looking at him, and I'm going, oh my gosh. And I, like I said, I was calculating 100 yards. I turned out to be a little wrong with that. But at any rate, uh, he stepped out, and broadside and looked at me and I had my gun in my lap and I thought well I think I can put three bullets in him before he gets to me and then my second thought was as big as this thing is that might just piss him off so I kind of thought better about I'm sorry didn't mean to touch that oh, it's okay. um, <laughs> um, and then it done a step back and went behind the tree and so I decided, well, me sitting here in the wide open on this stump, I need to move a little bit. And so here's the, there's a little sapling. It's only a couple of feet away from me where I'm at. So I get up while he's behind a tree and go behind this little tree. Now, remember, my belly is about baseball size and this tree is maybe soccer ball size <laughs> so that's where my question was answered could i be any more stupid yeah yeah okay yeah this is like what is that there's an old cartoon or something like Horton, the elephant hides in a cherry tree well that's about what i felt like so i'm sitting there trying to trying to crawl behind this tree as much as i can and i don't know it was maybe a minute or maybe a half a minute, um, it stepped back out. And for some reason, I just got the feeling automatically when he stepped back out that, that next time that uh, 
he wasn't any threat to me. Awesome. You know, and, uh, but he was cautious and I was cautious also by this point, but by then my FOF had kind of subsided. Um, now my curiosity was peaked. It's like, well, I got to figure this out. And, uh, he come back out again and I intentionally, I took my rifle and I put it down on the stump that I was just sitting on and leaned it up and went back behind that tree. Yeah, I was hiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and now this might be my, my imagination, but I just kind of got the sense when he seen me do that. Yeah. Uh, you've been in those situations with people where you get kind of a, you don't know what's going on, but when you kind of kind of figure out everything's okay, your shoulders kind of go from like this here and you they draw and that's what i've seen when he seen me put the rifle down and from that point on i thought he was probably as curious about me as i was him or her i don't know what it was um i i can't say it was bigfoot because like i told you the other day i never seen his feet because he was about a foot he was sitting in a low spot about a foot lower than where my eyesight was uh, but I just know he was massive. Yeah. It was, it was like I would want him on my side in a dark alley at night. You know? Right. So at any rate, we sit there, or I stood there. He stood there behind that tree, and he'd peep out every once in a while, and step out, and I'd try to hide my head behind this little sapling. Of course, he knew better than that. Uh, and then I'd look at him, and we'd kind of look at each other. And then it's when he'd done that that third time, I thought, oh my God, this poor animal, he is sick. Because he had this big knot between his clavicle here and his jaw. It's a big old knot. And I thought, oh man, he's either got cancer or, you know, lymph nodes, something, you know, yeah. swollen. Yeah. And I started feeling sorry for him. And, but he'd pop back out or pop back behind. And I'd hide my head and then I'd put my head out and he would come around and pop his head out and we'd look at each other. And I kept seeing this thing nod on him. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know. And I got the distinct, well, like I said, I got the distinct impression that he wanted to check me out just like I wanted to check him out. But neither one of us, you know, we wasn't going to sit down and have a cup of coffee. But, uh, <laughs> that went on pretty much for about two to three minutes. And uh, kind of a Mexican standoff, if you will. And then all of a sudden, he, he, was, he, he was out looking at me. And then all of a sudden, his head snapped head and shoulders snapped and turned and looked over on my finger, over my, on my side of the finger over there. And of course, when he'd done that, it scared, you know, we won't go into that. And then I heard the snap. He heard it before I did. So obviously his hearing was much better than mine was. Yeah. So I've done the same thing and I turned over and looked over that side. And I said, oh my, and now I'm back into SOS mode now. And uh, I looked back at him and he had turned around. He started walking back down where he come from. And that's when I, and that's when I seen his butt, big old butt. Kind of, I, call, I call it a bubble butt, big old huge butt. Yeah. Go to his Maximus if you want to be <laughs> nice about it. Uh, and right th at that point in time, I was wanting so bad to go down there and follow him and find out what this, this thing was. Yeah. And uh, of course, I said, no, I can't do that until I figure out what the hell that was over there. So I picked my rifle back up and I went back up into this finger 
and uh, it took me a few minutes to figure it out. And it was a damned old armadillo that was all rooting around, and it had stepped on a big old root or a yes. you know fallen limb, and it snapped. And I figured, well, so if I oops, if it scared him that much. <laughs> Uh, as it did me then okay all right so after i figured out there was no threat then i went back up to where i was at and that's when i stepped off a distance from where i was at to where this big oak tree was at and that's where i figured out that i was like 17 yards off my adjustment it was actually 83 yards and instead of 100 i had it just you know i hadn't thought about 100 yards and it was 83 actually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went down there and I looked on the ground for tracks and they was, you know, like I said, it had been dry, hadn't been raining for weeks and uh, it was hard pan. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, bulldozer couldn't have went through there and left a track. You know, it's just, it was just ridiculous. Yeah. And he was long gone by the time I got back down there. So I went back up to the tree thinking, well, maybe there's something up there. Didn't see no, there was no hair or nothing like that yeah. that, that I could, you know, look at and kind of yeah. figure out what this thing was. And, uh, but I did solve the riddle where I thought he had this growth on his clavicle to his jaw up here in this area. It wasn't on him, it was a viral knot on this big old oak tree. Yeah, and when he was standing there in that in that certain position, it looked like it was on him. Yeah, and I thought, oh, okay. Well, he's not a sick boy after all, I guess. <laughs> so I'm I'm five nine, and I've got a third from my shoulder from my joint to my fingertip is thirty three inches because I have a thirty three inch bow draw. Right, and. Uh, I stood up underneath that tree, stood on my tiptoes as far as I could, stretched my arm up, and my my middle finger could barely touch the bottom of this knot. Wow. So that would give you, I don't know, I haven't have done that measurement before, but you know, I'm five nine, I got another 33 inches, and I can barely touch it. And then and then thinking about it, he's standing a foot lower wow. than I am. So uh, that's why I guesstimated him uh, about eight foot. He had to be about eight foot. Yeah. And somewhere between six, eight hundred pounds. And that's judged on my years with wrestling. And, you know, after with wrestling, you kind of get to know weights. And then sure. years with on the farm, uh, working with cattle. Sure. And so I'm guessing between six, eight hundred pounds, somewhere in there. Wow. And I thought, oh my goodness. And so I said, that's it. I've got to go back to camp. Uh, I've got to, it's by the end, it's 10 o'clock, and I've got only two hours to get back to camp. And I got to go back up this up that hill. stupid east, up the hill that yeah. I've gone down through. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I went back up, finally made it back to camp. I made it just a little afternoon. And, uh, and I didn't say nothing to my partner. I just kept my mouth shut. I never said, in fact, I never said it, anything to anybody. Yeah. It. Yeah. And uh, today, I mean, I, I guess I'm, today I'll call it a Bigfoot. At the time, I was, you know, I wanted to be a bit more, uh, I don't know, PC. Yeah. Or <laughs> maybe not, maybe not, uh, invite myself to the embarrassment or something like that. Oh, I understand. And you had a, you had a security clearance also to worry about. Yes. I, I was in a sensitive position and, you know, if you start going around telling the people that you've seen this big foot and uh, that, and they look at you like, okay, your review is coming up next month. So we're going <laughs> to talk about this. You know? <laughs> did it, did it change the way that you hunted? Like knowing that it was, something like that was out there for real? Actually, no, it didn't because I didn't see any 
and I've seen this TV show and stuff since yeah. then yeah. about the only show that I'd actually ever seen before that was the uh, that show Legend of Boggy, Boggy Creek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great you show. Know? Yeah, great show. And uh, so I didn't really have an opinion one way or another. But after this encounter, I uh, I, I really wasn't worried about it. I, I never was scared. It never bothered me. It made me more aware, though. Right. It made me more observant. Okay. Yeah. But no, it uh, it didn't really change anything. I, I've gone hunting. Well, actually, that next year, uh, I had a horrible ATV accident. Busted up my leg real bad. So I didn't go hunting. I actually, I don't think I ever actually went deer hunting since then, but it wasn't because of the encounter. It's because right, right. my leg was all screwed up. Yeah. Uh, but I'd have gone squirrel hunting, fishing, and camping still, uh, you know, yeah. when I could. And then my job, I had just changed. I didn't really, I didn't change the unit that I was in. I just went to a different uh, yeah. job. Yeah. And so I started doing a lot of traveling and being yeah. gone all the time so i didn't get to hunt near as much or fish as much as i did after that well I, no i didn't no I, I thought it was really interesting i remember when we first spoke um you said it it took you about six months to process what you had seen and that you've made the decision mm -hmm. to write it all down um and mm -hmm. you were gonna and you just you wrote it all down kind of for your posterity for your grandkids and you put that mm -hmm. encounter exactly. Yeah, you put that encounter in a safe and really never intending mm -hmm. to file a report or talk about it. But then uh, one evening you and your son got to visiting and you went ahead and got it out of the safe and you gave it to him and he read it and he was like, mm -hmm. Dad, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta share this. You gotta, you gotta tell it to somebody. That's exactly how, that's exactly how this become, I'll call it public. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, uh, it was the spring of next year of uh, 97. And I hadn't dwelled on it, didn't we? No PTSD or nothing like that. But it yeah. occasionally yeah. popped back in my head. And I thought, you know, uh, one day my wife at the time, she was TDY out to New Mexico. So I was batching it that weekend. And uh, anyway, I sat down on my computer. And I went to Microsoft Word and just wrote this up. I did, and as you know, you've seen the report. I didn't write it in report form. No. It was never meant to be a report. Right. It was just meant to be something I was going to leave my grandkids or kids later when I'm dead and they go through my stuff. So I, I wrote it out in just kind of the way I told you. Yeah. And then put it on a three and a half inch floppy put it with my other three and a half inch floppies, which I had for like genealogical stuff and some family stuff. And I just threw it in there and put it away. I don't never even thought about it again. Yeah, isn't uh, that amazing? And then, and then in 2009, that's when my wife uh, at the time, she uh, was TDY. Uh, so my son came over and we were sitting in the living room watching TV and uh, there was a show about Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and me and him had had a couple of little, little minor, we never seen the Bigfoot, but when me and him was camping, this was before he, he was still in the high school. He graduated in 95, so it was before that. Uh, at any rate, that's why I, sh I gave him the disc, put, and I put my laptop out there and put the disc in, let him read it. And that's when he said, you need to report this. And this was in 2009. Yes, it was. It was, yeah. And I said, report it to who and why? He says, Dad, this is interesting. And I said, well, I don't know. Report it to who? <laughs> and he said, he didn't know either. So we just pulled up the internet and done a research thing. And I've seen all these Bigfoot sites. And I went to them and they were boring, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I run across that BFR site, 
B F O R site. Yeah, yeah. And I said, well, now this one is a little different because at least it's kind of organized. And I kind of like the way that it's kind of a scientific, you know, that's why my mind works. Sure. It was kind of a scientific thing, organized. And so I just logged on there, got a log on, took my diskette, put it in there, done a select, copy, and just pasted it. I that's didn't awesome. do any of it. The only editing I'd done, I think, is I changed a couple of commas and a period and maybe corrected some spelling, and that was it. And I, yeah. and I just forgot about it. I didn't think any more about it. And yeah. then one day I get a phone call from Sevilla. <laughs> and that was the beginning. That's right. That's so awesome. That was the beginning. And I will be uh, I will be interspersing these uh, you know the images that we created together of what you saw that day mm -hmm. uh, in our little yeah. video here. And we've only got like maybe a little okay. bit about a minute and a half left. Is there anything else um, that you want to share with the audience about your experience? The only thing I would share is if you've had an experience, if you've seen something, don't hold it in tell somebody tell your family and if it's important enough to you find Sibylla here and call her up and tell her um, your encounter awesome. there is no way on this earth that there is this many people seen and experienced stuff that it, it's false you know maybe some of them might be some of them might be mistaken but don't hide it. I mean, yeah. you know, it kind of ate me up for a long while there. So, yeah. And now I don't care. I'm retired now, so ain't nobody can do that to me. So. <laughs> well, thank you, Jimmy, for 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 saying that, and thank you so much for being here. We're going to be running out of time, but um, okay. I appreciate. I so appreciate you coming on here and doing this with me. I appreciate you, Sabella. Mm, You've always you. been so nice to me. Well. No.